afternoon, all of you. It's on the last presentation of DSI 7, I think. So excited to be here. I'd like to begin with a small video clip. If I, we could have, dim the lights, please. हेलो जी हाँ मैंने ही फोन किया था जैसे हम लोगों के पड़ोस में भी काफ़ी घटनाएं होती हैं और हम लोग उसको नज़रअंदाज कर देते हैं उसको इतने ज़्यादा गंभीरता से नहीं लेते हैं लेकिन जिस तरह से बिल बजाओ के द्वारा हम लोगों ने जाना कि उन चीज़ों को भी हम देखना चाहिए हमारे बगल में हुई थी लड़ाई हस्बैंड वाइफ में हो रही थी तब मैं उनके यहाँ बैल बजाने गई और उनसे कहा और मैंने उनके यहाँ चायपत्ती मांगी थी हमारे जिया जी आए थे तो उनके यहाँ फिर लड़ाई बंद हो गई और तब उनके यहाँ तक अभी तक लड़ाई नहीं इस ट्रेनिंग के बाद मुझ में वो हिम्मत सी आई है और मैं और भी जो महिलाएं आती हैं उनमें भी मैं वही हिम्मत डालने की कोशिश करती हूँ कि मैं आप को एक स्ट्रॉन्ग बनाओ अपने आप में एक हिम्मत लाओ जो कि मुझ में अब आ चुकी है आई एम पानगे मोहन सेक्रेटरी जनरल ऑफ द यूनाइट नेशन बिलियंस ऑफ मैन एंड बॉयज इन मेनी कंट्रीज आर स्टॉपिंग दिस वायरस जस्ट बाय लिफ्टिंग वन फिंगर इन हिंदी इट इज कॉल्ड Bell bajao, which means ring the bell. confronted with the situation of violence hold the thought we'll come to it breakthrough is a global human rights organization and we really work to create safety for women and girls all over the world we do it with youth innovate with media and creative tools to engage a larger audience and we push public awareness and mobilize communities because ultimately it is all of us who are responsible everybody has a part to play So what is the problem that we are really talking about and what are its implications? The problem is the one in three women face violence. It is a worldwide phenomena and it is a silent epidemic which cuts across. What kind of violence? It could be violence which is physical, which is emotional, sexual, 
financial, any kind. Even street harassment is a form of violence. Cyber stalking is violence. And this is not me, this is the Government of India National Family Health Survey which is t t giving us the figures. It is not just in India, it is a global pandemic. These are the statistics which we have from the WHO where almost women is battered, they say, almost every 15 seconds, which is huge. There are 600 million women who are living in countries where domestic violence is not considered a crime. If we really look at the kind of incidence of violence, by four parameters only, age, the incidence, 34% of girls, uh, women and girls between the ages of 15 and 45 face violence. The prevalence is low in lower age groups, it increases, max, it is higher between 30 to 39. The prevalence across education is highest when the woman is not educated, 44%. Comes down significantly when there is when more than 12 years of education. Across wealth status, it is there across both the upper and the higher uh, wealth status, highest for the lowest quintiles and lo sig significantly lower for the lowest ones. And of course, between urban and rural areas, rural areas face more violence. We see more violence. But it still continues. Violence is still prevailing. It cuts, cuts across caste, class, creed, race, across borders. And why does it happen? It is really because there's a huge silence about the issue. Women are conditioned, they are socialized to really rationalize, accept, even tolerate it. It is a personal matter, you don't talk about it. But unless you talk about a problem, how do you find a solution? And this has huge losses, I mean, the, in terms of a personal loss, generational loss, and ultimately economic losses. The impact on the economy is huge, the detrimental impact on the economy is huge in terms of loss of labor hours, the huge medical costs, the uh, psychological burden that the woman has to bear. At the, this year's opening the plenary at the Davos, Ms. Christian Lagarde actually said the evidence is clear when women do better, economies do better. When we invest in women, we really see how families do better and the communities do better because there are increased standards of nutrition, health and education all around. So how do we solve the problem? I mean, what, are, what can we really do about it? We really need to build something, whatever the solution, we really need to look at something which is long-lasting, which is effective, which is sustainable, and which can really work at scale. Because unless, uh, here we are really talking about changes in social norms and behaviors. We are really talking about in terms of change, increasing the number of social change actors. And unless we can work at scale, we cannot really change our social norms. A little genesis about breakthrough, how did we really begin? You know, when you talk of social norms, we really talked of changing culture by using culture. What began as an experiment, we launched Manke Manjire Breakthrough was registered in 1999 and started in 2000, was the first campaign when we did Manke Manjire. It was using popular culture to talk to diverse public. What began as an experiment really became a huge success. This was a chart buster for more than six months. <coughs> and it really helped in creating a public dialogue about the issue. We have offices in India and the US. We work on violence against women. In India, we look at it through the lens of domestic violence, early marriage, and sex selective elimination. In the USA, it is immigrant rights and racial justice for women. There's cross uh, center learning between the two the countries. So, how do we change social, bring about this social change? How do we create leaders for change? Sorry. We really believe in transforming hearts, minds and actions. Human rights begins with each one of us. If each one of us can take that one action, if we are not a bystander, then we can do it. We begin with using media, arts and popular culture, with technology to engage a diverse public. We do it with videos to Twitter, from uh, poetry to street theatre, to uh, using uh, uh, traditional art forms, all kinds to engage different publics. We develop partnership, we work with uh, leadership, we create leadership building capacity with youth, right from the ages of 15 to 35. They are our target segments. We need to start young. We mobilize communities, we transform them into human rights, uh, human rights advocates, we develop leadership potential in them so that they can further engage with the communities, engage and activate them, both in public, in physical spaces as well as virtual spaces. We promote community action for local and uh, global human rights. 
we engage with diverse partners across. Partners who can help us reach scale, who can help us get the impact that we desire to see. Partners who can bring in the creative talent as well as critical thinking. We have engaged with community-based organizations on the ground, to government agencies, universities, schools, businesses, corporates, advertising agencies, entertainment industry, right across. And we measure our impact and share lessons very strongly across. So what we are really proposing at this forum today is we plan to launch and build the Breakthrough Institute, which will really give out knowledge and tools to other organizations to launch social change campaigns efficiently and at scale and also create a large number of social change actors which will in place, in turn, enable women, communities and economies to thrive. We have systematized all our knowledge from the integrated mass media campaigns, the multimedia campaigns that we've done and we're now wanting to share it with other organizations. Breakthrough Institute will create NGOs and CBOs. Now we are tra training organizations, but there are individuals within the organization. So each of them become the catalyst of change. And they have in turn impact the communities at large at the local and regional levels. We have already we are piloting it in Bangladesh and Nepal right now. In Bangladesh, we are piloting it in Khulna district, working with seven partners, amongst them BRAC, VCAN and STEPS being the major ones. The community mobilization, leadership development, everything takes place at the district level where the media campaign is a pan, uh, all in uh, Bangladesh campaign. We're working on street harassment in Bangladesh. How does this model operate? We really begin with doing a training needs analysis of the partners who will be uh, doing the course with us, finding out the gaps, what are the issues to be addressed. The training is designed according to that. We train them, there are two levels of training. The first one is really first on um, the issue. What is the issue that we're talking about? Because there are cross-cutting and very complex issues of gender, sexuality, with a rights-based approach. A woman's vulnerability to it. And second is, how do you do it? Okay, if this is the issue, how do you approach it? How do you find the solution to it? So instructional design is more like a how to do with all the breakthrough methodology. And further, there's a specialized training on complete works of media, or the different forms of media that you can engage in, a deep monitoring and evaluation, right from doing your own theory of change to taking it forward, and uh, yeah, in partner strategic partnership development to helping them roll out a campaign. The course content will essentially comprise of knowledge, strategies and tools, communication, which is a call for action with consistent messaging across board to campaign rollout. The impact can be really again seen at multiple levels because here we have organizations as well as individuals from the organizations who are a catalyst of change. So they help in really forming strong local and regional networks and they produce effective social change campaigns, thereby impacting really millions of lives. What is a USP? We are USP is innovative use of media, arts and technology, our ability to build effective curriculums which can be sustained, strategic partnerships, impact measurement tools and working at scale. And I'll use the Bell Bajau case, uh, campaign as a case study to run you through all of these. For Bell Bajau, our TV ads actually reached out to more than 130 million people in phase one. It was done in two phases. And 110 million people in phase two. This was just the mass media, which was TV. Video vans we ran through uh, semi-urban and rural areas, which reached out to 7.5 million people over 200 days. We did messaging for TV serials, KBC being one of them. There were a lot of other soap operas where messaging, we were the message, uh, we gave the content and the message. Online engagement through videos, Facebook, Twitter, the works. We have uh, in our organization every week, we have a weekly tweet -a -thon on a particular issue. It could be anything. We recently did something on music as activism. How do you use uh, music? So, and very engaging, use, engaging the youth essentially. We have created more than 100,000 change agents till date and growing by the day. Bell Bajau has had regional adaptations in countries like China, Vietnam, Pakistan, and Malaysia. We've had queries from the uh, Scotland police to Denmark to various countries because every, the violence against women is cross-cutting. Our partners are all our funders who help us actually deliver the program on the ground. 
to the hundreds of NGOs who are our implementation partners. The government of India is the biggest partner. I mean, they really cam uh, aired the campaign for two years on all prime time channels. We receive pro bono support from them, which is really worth, if we put a cost to it, it would be 150 million. Ogilvy does pro bono work. All the creatives are done by Ogilvy. We measure our impact. We do it through formative research. This is just an example of how we did one part of the Belbajau campaign. We do it through formative research, baseline, midline, and line studies. We are now doing an RCT for our early marriage, which is the randomized control trial for our early marriage project and sex selective elimination project. We also do qualitative studies, which are longitudinal cohort study and MSCT. We work at scale. When we started, uh, launched Bell Bajan in 2008, we were in UP and Karnataka only and one issue. By 2012, we have now got three more issues. Thematic areas have increased and the number of states. I'd like to point out that Odisha, the Odisha government adapted Bell Bajan as a state campaign in last year, November. So now we want, it could really be a model which every state government, here's a ready-made model which works. You can just take it and replicate it in your own state. We're launching the Delhi campaign this year. So what do I need? I really need 2.75 crores for three years to train 25 to 30 NGOs in India to run a social, do a social, launch a social change campaign. Or four crores to train organizations in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Nepal. We're talking at the regional level now. This is how I will be utilizing my 2.75 crores. 45% goes into train my training course, building my, uh, for my trainers. 10% to develop my curriculum, training, and training material and other media products. Equipment takes 3%. There's m and &E. We have an online training component also. We break even in the sixth year. 2.75 takes will be used to cover the deficit in the first three years. We'll break even in year six. So briefly, this is our team. Malik, uh, Breakthrough was founded by Malika, both in, the, in, in India and in the US. These are the all uh, key people. We have a board, diverse board, who bring in their own strategic, uh, they open doors to us. They give us strategic thinking and visioning. We have 11 member board who are by appointment with the board meets regularly. And our staff size is 32 people in India. These are our champions who advocate for us, who are breakthrough advocates from all walks of life. So really, human rights starts with each of us. And all of you are actually the triggers who can be the catalyst of change. So can we break through together? Thank you.